ready all set first chronicles chapter 12 verse 32 go to first chronicles chapter 12 verse 32 first chronicles chapter 12 verse 32 and i'm reading to you from the new king james version it says of the sons of Issachar who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do, their chiefs were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. So this particular tribe of Issachar, the sons of Issachar, it says that these people had understanding of the times. They had understanding of the times. So this particular people, this particular group of people, this particular tribe, the speciality was that they had understanding of the times, right? They understood the times that they were in and also they had understanding of the times that were about to come. So they were people with understanding. Uh, and because they had understanding of the times, it says to, they knew what Israel ought to do. So these people had understanding of the times and because of that understanding, they knew exactly what they were supposed to be doing. And I believe we, we in this time that we are living in and in the future as well, we need to be people with understanding. We need to have understanding of the times that we are living in and we need to have understanding of the times in the future as well so that we will know what to do. Sometimes, you know, the reason we don't know what to do, the reason we don't know how to, uh, how to conduct our lives, the reason we don't know what to, you know, what to say and what not to say and how to conduct our lives and how to live victoriously in dominion and successfully in the midst of all the challenges of all the contrary waves that come in it's because we lack understanding because the moment we have we become people of understanding we will know what we ought to be doing we will know this is what understanding gives to us it it, 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 it gives us the ability to, uh, to do what we ought to be doing, right? To, to live the way we ought to be living, to conduct our lives the way we ought to be conducting our lives. So this is what understanding does. And this particular group of people, the tribe of Issachar, and also the, 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 the sons of Issachar, the Bible says they had understanding of the times that they were living in and they knew what to do. See, what happens is as, as God's people, we, it's very important for us that we need to be people with understanding of the times, not just in the current times, but also in the future as well, so that we will know what we ought to be doing, not just for us as well, but we will know what even our children ought to be doing. This is what understanding does. It will not only, uh, not only it's not just us who will be knowing what to be, what we ought to be doing, but also our children will also know what they ought to be doing in the future as well. So, you know, when we have understanding, we will know what to do in regards to our personal lives, in regards to our family life, in regards to our, the, our work, in regards to our job, in regards to our business, in regards to our uh, church and ministry, in regards to, you know, different occupation that God has, in, has put us in. We will know what we ought to be doing. Because things are going to get rough on the earth. Yes, before the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ from heaven, things are going to get rough on the earth. But when we have understanding, we will know what we ought to be doing. Right? We will know what we ought to be doing. And that is what understanding gives to us. So we need to be people with understanding of the times so that we know what we ought to be doing. All right, let's go to First Chronicles chapter 7, verse 1. Now, the sons of Issachar, the Bible says that they had understanding of the times and they knew what Israel ought to be doing. Right? First Chronicles chapter 7, verse 1. Now I want to show, I want to uh, I want to today teach on the sons of Issachar. I want to title my message as the sons of Issachar. First Chronicles chapter 7. Verse number one. The sons of Issachar were Tola, Pua, Jashub, and Shimron, four in all. So this Issachar uh, had four sons, and their names were Tola, Pua, 
Jashub and Shimron. They were four sons in all. And for the next few weeks, we are going to study on the four sons of Issachar. Right? So these are the people who had understanding of the times and they knew what Israel ought to be doing. Now, who were these, these sons of Issachar? Issachar and his sons, who were they? The sons of Issachar, the first son, <coughs> his name was, the Bible says, Tola. Right? Tola. Tola. Now, these people had understanding. Before, before I take you into the sons of Issachar, let's go to one verse, Proverbs chapter 2, verse 11. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 11. What does understanding give us? As God's people, what will understanding give us? Very important for us to have understanding. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 11 says, that Discretion will preserve you. Understanding will keep you. Understanding will keep you. Understanding will protect you. In other words, understanding will guard you. So this is what understanding will give us. It will guard us. Can you imagine that? Understanding will guard us. Understanding will protect us. Understanding will keep us. That's why the Bible says that in all you're getting, get understanding. It's so important for us to gain understanding. And this understanding comes only from God. Right? It comes only from God. So it's very important. Understanding will, what it will do, it will keep us. It will protect us. It will preserve us. It will guard us. Right? So, you know, when we have understanding, it will protect, it will guard us, it will keep us. In every facet of our lives, it will keep us, it will guard us. Let it be health, let it be finances, let it be family life, let it be ministry, let it be church, let it be business, workplace, job, occupation. Etc. 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 Whatever, whatever, whatever is in life, understanding will keep us. It will guard us. It will preserve us. It will protect us. Right? Even in relationships, interacting with people, communicating with people, handling different situations. When we are people of understanding, and the un understanding will guard us. It will protect us. It will keep us. Hallelujah. So the first son. Of Issachar, his name was Tola. Now, the name Tola is very interesting because the name Tola, one of the meanings of the name Tola means worm. It means worm. You know, when we consider a worm, what when we look at a worm, what does what does it speak to, what does it speak to us you know worm is a very small in you know creature and uh, you know very weak creature very small creature and anybody can put their foot on it and smash it and destroy it you know and crush it right it's a very small creature it's a very uh, you know weak and small creature anybody can put their foot and crush a worm that is what worm speaks it speaks of you know not it's totally nothing it's totally weak it's totally nothing it's totally weak and it's powerless anybody can crush it so i want to tell you that when in these times that we are living in and in the future the you know the battles will be intense darkness will be gross There'll be gross darkness cover, covering the earth. Battles will be intense, intense. Challenges will be more. As we draw closer and closer to the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ from heaven. And it's at that moment where we will begin to feel as if we are very small. We are like a worm. You know, when the challenges intensify, when the challenges... Uh, when the challenges intensify, when the battles are intense, that's when, you know, challenges of life, different issues, different battles. As believers, as saints of God, as a church, 
we need to remember that when we are facing these things, we may sometimes feel we are like a worm. We are weak. We are powerless. We are helpless. And, you know, we are just like a worm. And, you know, when we, we need to understand in the midst of all these things, we need, we need God. We may, we may feel weak. We may feel powerless. We may feel so helpless. That we may, we may, uh, when we are facing the end time battles, the end time, you know, the challenges in life, the end time battle, and all these things, when we, when we will be, when we will be confronting the spirit of the antichrist, and all those things, sometimes you know, we may feel very weak, we may feel very powerless, we may feel like a worm, you know, easily crushed. But in the midst of all these things, God is going to turn us into a powerful instrument of his hallelujah in the midst of all these things god will turn us into a powerful instrument the understanding that we need to have is this that though we may feel weak though we may feel like a worm though we may feel helpless and powerless but god is going to turn us into his Weapon his instrument. Isaiah chapter 41, please. Let's go to Isaiah 41. So, God will turn us around. So, in the midst of all the challenges, all the battles that we face, get ready because God will pour his Holy Spirit upon us in such a powerful way. The glory of God is going to rise upon us and shine upon us in such a way. That he's going to turn us around. Amen. He's going to remove that state of helplessness that we are facing. That we may be feeling helpless and powerless and weak. And easily can be crushed. God is going to pour his Holy Spirit upon us. He's going, to, he's going to raise us up in such a way. The glory of God is going to shine upon us in such a way. That he's going to make us his instrument. As I chapter 41 verse 14. Fear not, you worm Jacob, you men of Israel. So you see, Jacob, Israel was in a situation where they were afraid, you know, and uh, they were fa they were facing their enemies, they were facing challenges, they were facing all the problems. And in the midst of that, God tells them, "Fear not, you worm Jacob. Fear not, you worm Jacob, you men of Israel. I will help you," says the Lord. And your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. So, see how God is calling Israel there? He's calling them as a worm. Why? Because that is what that is how they were feeling when they were facing their enemies. <laughs> they were feeling so small. They were feeling so inferior. They were feeling so helpless and weak and powerless before their enemies. <laughs> and in the midst of what in the midst of when Israel was feeling themselves like a like a worm, God tells them, fear not, O worm, Jacob. Jacob, you may be feeling like a worm. Israel, you may be feeling like a worm facing your enemies, facing the battles, facing the challenges. But he says, fear not. Fear not. And this is what we need to guard our hearts from in these last days. And even in our lives, we need to guard our hearts from fear. Hallelujah. We need to guard our hearts from fear. Maybe you have a fear of, of you know, certain sickness, certain disease, certain financial problems, some problem issue in life, some challenges, maybe in your church, in your ministry. But God says, fear not. Hallelujah. Fear not, you worm Jacob. You men of Israel, I will help you, says the Lord, and your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Verse 15, Behold, I will make you into a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth. You shall thresh the mountains and beat them small and make the hills like chaff. So God is saying, not only be af don't be afraid of worm Jacob. First he calls them worm because that's how they were feeling about themselves when they were facing these enemies of theirs, the challenges and all opposition and all those things. God says, fear not. 
And then he says, I will make you into a new threshing sledge with a sharp teeth. You shall thresh the mountains and beat them small and make the hills like chaff. Hallelujah. So God says that I am going to make you into a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth. You shall thresh the mountains and beat them small. Make the hills like a chaff. So when you're feeling like a worm, God says, I'm going to turn you around. I'm going to make you an instrument that is going to thresh the mountains and beat them small and make the hills like chaff. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is how God is going to transform us. This is how the glory of God is going to change us. This is how the glory of God is going to transform us. Amen. This is how the power of God, the glory of God, the 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 Holy Spirit is going to transform us. God is going to transform us into a instrument. I will make you into a new threshing sledge, it says. New threshing sledge. He's going to make us a new instrument. Not like the old one, but a new instrument. I will make you into a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth. You shall thresh the mountains, beat them small, and make the hills like sharp. So this is how God is going to transform his church. This is how God is going to transform you and me. In the end times, in these days, God is going to transform us even when all hell breaks loose, when darkness, when there is gross darkness covers, covering the earth. The glory of God is going to come upon us and he's going to transform us. He's going to make us into a new, into a new threshing sledge, into a new instrument, into a new weapon with sharp teeth. We shall thresh the mountains and beat them small and make the hills like sharp. So all the opposition, all the all the mountains, God says that you are going to thresh it. And you're going to beat them small. And make the hills like shaft. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 16. You shall winnow them. The wind shall carry them away. And the whirlwind shall scatter them. You shall rejoice in the Lord. And glory in the house of Israel. So it says that you shall winnow them. And the wind shall, wind shall carry them. I like this. The wind shall carry them. The wind always represents the Holy Spirit. So you see, you see the partnership. Holy Spirit and us are going to be the end time partners. Hallelujah. Amen. We are going to beat all the challenges of the enemy. God, the glory of God is going to beat. Uh, the glory of God is going to come upon us and every challenge we are going to face it. So the power of the name of Jesus, the power of the blood of Jesus, the power of his word. We are going to uh, be victorious in the midst of all the challenges that comes. Amen. And not just that, the Holy Spirit is going to be with us. He's going to keep partnering with us. Amen. Even when situations get darker and darker on the earth, the Holy Spirit is going to partner with us. It says the wind shall carry them away and the whirlwind shall scatter them. You shall rejoice in the Lord and glory in the house, the Holy One of Israel. So, the, you know, days will be dark. But for God's people, it's time of great rejoicing in the Lord and glory in the house of Israel. Amen. It will be times of great joy for God's people, for us. So we must remember that the moment people of understanding are those who see themselves as helpless and powerless and weak and nothing. It's at that moment, God comes and changes us. Amen. People of understanding are not the ones who you know, have, a, uh, have a too high opinion about themselves. But rather, they are the ones who are, who are helpless before God, who are totally dependent on God, who are, uh, you know, who are, who are powerless and weak before God. And it's such people that God pours his Holy Spirit upon them and transforms them into his instrument whom who he's going to use to thresh mountains and beat the hills to dust. Glory to God. People with understanding always are those who are helpless before God, who are who, who you know who who were so weak and powerless that they depend upon God for His power. They are the people who are people of understanding. That they don't depend upon their wisdom. They don't depend upon their intelligence. They don't depend upon their qualification, and they don't depend upon their personality. They don't depend upon their finance, their money, 
their experience, all those things, they don't depend. They depend only upon God. They are the people who have understanding. Amen? They are the people who have understanding, who see themselves as poor in the spirit, who are weak and who are weak and who are weak before God, who are powerless before God. They are the ones who cry to God saying, Lord, I'm, I'm powerless without you, Lord. I need your power. I'm weak. I need your power. Amen. They are the people who are people of understanding. Glory to God. Amen. All right. Number two, Tola also means crimson or scarlet. Tola also means crimson or scarlet. What does that speak to us? What does that speak to us? Isaiah 1 verse 18. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Though your sins are like scarlet. So our sins are being compared here like a scarlet. And though they are red like crimson. So our sins are being compared over here like uh, to scarlet and red like crimson. So crimson and scarlet speaks of our sins. It speaks of our, of our, of our sins. Here God says, come let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. That they, though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So your God is calling his people and he's saying that, come let us sit and reason together. Come to me, he says, though your sins may be like this, but yet they will be white as snow. So it's talking about, uh, about us coming to the place where God can cleanse us. He can cleanse us. He can cleanse us from everything that defiles us. So, this is the place God is going to bring us to. God is going to bring us to this place. And Tola reminds us of the cleansing of God, the forgiveness of God. It reminds us of uh, you know, being cleansed and being forgiven. Right? Being cleansed and being forgiven. That is what Tola reminds us of. Tola firstly reminds us of a place of helplessness, weakness, powerlessness. It also means a place of being cleansed, being forgiven. You know, being cleansed and being forgiven. Being washed. And cleansed and forgiven. Amen. So these the people of understanding are those who are helpless, powerless, and weak before God, but also those who have experienced the cleansing of God. They have been purified by the blood of Jesus. They have been sanctified by the word of God. They have been, they have been, they have experienced the cleansing of God. The cleansing of the Holy Spirit as well. They have experienced it. These are the people. Of understanding. Let's go to Isaiah 59 verse 20 as we close. Isaiah 59 verse 20. Isaiah 59 verse 20. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 59 verse 20. The Redeemer will come to Zion and those who turn from transgression in Jacob, says the Lord. So it says the Redeemer will come to Zion and to those who turn from transgression in Jacob, says the Lord. So whom is Jesus going to come to? Whom is Jesus going to come to? To those who turn from their transgression in Jacob, the Bible says, says the Lord. So those people who have turned away from their sins, who have turned from their iniquities, from their wicked ways, God is going to 
come to them. These are the ones who are the people of Zion. Who are the people of Zion? The people of Zion are those who have turned from their transgressions, who have turned from their wicked ways, who have turned from their sins. These are the ones that God is going to come to. These are the ones that Jesus is going to come and visit and reveal himself to. These are the ones that Jesus will appear and make himself known to. Not the ones who are playing, who call themselves as believers and born again believers, yet playing with, playing with sin, yet involved in sin, you know, yet involved in all the filthy activities. Not such people. But God will come to those who have turned from their transgressions. That means they have experiencing, they have experienced the cleansings of God, they have experienced the purification of God, they have experienced the 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 you know the, the total cleansing and total purification of God and have turned from their transgressions. These are the ones that Jesus is going to come to. These are the ones that God is going to come to and reveal himself to. Make make them his dwelling place, manifest his glory in and through them. Hallelujah. So Tola reminds us of a place of powerlessness, of a place of helplessness, of a place of weakness before God. But also it reminds us of a place of being cleansed and turning away from our transgression so that God can come and meet with us and visit us and habitate with us and make himself known to us hallelujah praise the lord amen may god bless this message to our hearts shall we pray father in the name of jesus we just want to thank you and praise you for this word that you gave us today lord lord we just pray Father, we just praise you, praise you, praise you, Lord. Make us people of understanding, we pray, Lord. Mm -hmm.